G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, we're going to be having another look at the Phantom F4E and F4EJ versus MiG-21 BIS saga. Now, recently I uploaded a video on the MiG-21, suggesting that it was a little bit too strong uh, in terms of its performance. Of course, its missiles were sort of not as good, but just right, and that there was an issue with the Phantom players turn fighting. Now, these particular issues were the sort of major three that I brought up, and most of them basically still stand. But uh, I have a couple of little things to add to that little conversation after receiving a little bit of feedback. Now, the first thing is I seem like I've changed my mind on the MiG, on the MiG 21 BIS, and I haven't. Uh, the game has changed around it, so from the introduction of the MiG 21 BIS, the missiles were similar performing to an AIM 9E. Uh, at least the R60s were. Something had happened to them, and it turns out it was a bug, like I said in the video. Um, and that has basically made the MiG-21 BIS a lot stronger than it was on release. Uh, now, another thing that has changed is the spotting system. Now, a lot of people were saying that they noticed a lot of uh, MiGs turn fighting. And uh, that we'll get into a little bit later. But that has been a bit of an issue lately. And we'll, again, we'll discuss later. The third issue that a lot of people were finding were the missiles, the AIM-7s specifically. Now, don't ask me how that one managed to hit, but the AIM-7s are only really good where the radar does not have as much interference. Remember that radar works by sending uh, radio waves and they bounce back and that is what basically creates the radar signature. It's the frame of the aircraft bouncing back radio waves. And remember that the ground does that as well. It's not just the the planes, and I think clouds do it as well. Um, so you've got those particular sort of areas, and, and of course terrain does that. So like mountains, uh, hills, rivers, etc. They also do that. So you have a lot of things that can reflect that radar signature and cause interference. Now this interference is not really, oh, it, it's sort of, uh, blocks the signature. So what you need to do is you need to basically be up at high altitude to use these missiles. Now a lot of the times you'll find that your, your enemies or your teammates end up mowing the lawn um, but for those enemies that are up high that's where you use the AIM-7s and of course when the enemies are below you you use the AIM-9s. Uh, for that the Phantom is fairly good honestly. Uh, the AIM-9Js perform sort of in a similar level to the uh, R60s, you can see that particular missile was a little bit ambitious, yet I still managed to land the target. But remember that you also have a couple of little perks above the MiG-21 BIS. You have that energy retention in a turn that you can use, and you have more flares and more missiles, as well as a better gun. So do remember to use those to your effect. A lot of people have said that the Phantom is a little bit low in terms of its uh, capabilities, and overall it is very slightly in terms of its raw performance. But in terms of its avionics and its uh, and its weaponry, it sort of makes up for that a little bit in that respect. Uh, if you think about it, the SMT and the MF are actually faster on the deck, uh, according to the stat card which you can access on the forums. For me. I didn't actually know this, but the Phantom had a much better climb rate, and the SMT and the MF had better top speeds. Now, it didn't seem like that, because you were always turning in the MiG-21, um, and that's something that Phantoms need to sort of exploit. You need to be able to exploit those uh, turns, those single turns, but you also need to be using your teammates. And in this match here, we're going to be sort of seeing what happens when your teammates do a little vanish on you, because they can do that. And honestly, they often do that because they end up turn fighting. And in the next sort of uh, match, we'll sort of discuss that as well. Remember guys, AIM-7s are still fairly viable and you can do plenty of good work with the AIM-7s. You just need to be either at altitude or at uh, a fairly you know steep upwards angle. And of course, remember that the AIM-7s have a one kilometer dead range in order to not prematurely detonate. So they will fly dead straight for one kilometer and then they will move towards their target fairly rapidly. And honestly, the AIM-7s are fairly viable if you make sure that you limit them to that. Remember also that they have a 12 kilometer range, but don't fire them at anything above 10 kilometers. I think 10 is your, your maximum limit for safely sort of launching them at someone. I think that is your best bet there. If you launch them at 10, you will almost be fine 
90% of the time, I would say, if you follow the other rules as well. Um, another thing that uh, Koala suggested is that you should use the smaller FOV on the radar. Uh, that's the one that I'm using currently. Don't use the big fat, I think it's 120 degree one. If you use that one, you have a higher chance of experiencing interference. Now, returning back to the gameplay, you can see that most of my team has disappeared. Now, the Phantom isn't a particularly well-performing plane in terms of its uh, general performance. I'm pretty sure that the Draken actually beats it on the deck. Uh, and the Mirage comes damn close. So you don't really have that many options when your teammates abandon you, which is why you need to work together to sort of string your opponents along. Kind of like you need to work together in a P-51 and a P-47 to achieve the, the results against things like a Zero or a BF-109 or something that can turn a lot better than you. In this particular case, I am basically being gang raped by about four enemy planes. There's not a whole lot that you can do in that situation, and there's not a lot that you can expect someone to do in that situation. Again, we're having another match where my teammates basically do a vanish, uh, and that's one of the reasons why a lot of phantoms tend to be sort of uh, losing out. A lot of the time, if my team doesn't sort of do the heck and vanish, they tend to do actually fairly well. And you'll see certain circumstances where that happens. The first game is a good example of that. So one of the things that I brought up earlier was the spotting system. And I noted that it uh, seemed to not be conducive or not be favorable to phantoms. Now, let me explain in a little bit more detail. The way the spotting, si spotting system is currently is that you it's a little bit lower. I don't quite know why. I think it's a bug. It seems to be the case every now and then. And when I made my uh, Everything Wrong with Top Tier Jets video uh, that was very, very... Uh, it's, it's dated now. But there are certain issues that come and go. And at this particular case, we're sort of experiencing similar issues. Uh, certainly not the zombie sabers, which was a real pain in the ass. But notice how that MiG-21 popped in at 5 kilometers. Can you imagine if I did a 180 degree turn to go and help a friendly, and then within 5 kilometers this MiG-21 decided to pop in and say hi? You're not really going to survive that, because the MiG-21 will outrun you. The Phantoms really rely on getting that sort of uh, first shot in, if you will. They sort of rely on being the first one. They, ha they have the highest range missiles in the game, the AIM-7s. They have the best avionics. They have the most flares, and they have a pretty respectable climb rate. So in these situations, you actually can't use everything, except maybe the radar, um, to its full effectiveness. And for me, that's a real issue. The thing is, if you don't have that line of sight, you can't make an informed decision on where your opponent is if they're this low to the ground. You can't get a radar lock. It's just not feasible. This is the kind of shit that really makes me upset with War Thunder because this particular case, it doesn't benefit the Phantoms. In fact, it hinders them a lot. And you can see here my team has done a heck and vanish and that has left me with no other option but to turn fight. To give up my advantage of altitude, to give up my advantage of working with a team and therefore to suffer the consequences of being shot down like a lonely little Phantom that I am. This is the main issue with the Phantom is a little bit that it is not a particularly strong plane. Yes, that's true. But I think the main issue here is the spotting system not allowing phantoms to make those costly maneuvers that would otherwise give them the advantage. So you cannot, in the, in the phantom, just turn and then not suffer the consequences. Whereas with a MiG, you at least have that opportunity to redeem yourself because you have such a strong turn rate. Maybe not against something like a Mirage, and actually, now uh, that, I, that I think about it, in the MiG-21 BIS, I have had issues with Mirage's turn fighting and uh, sort of coming out of nowhere. That is a major issue with War Thunder, and that's something that you just cannot ignore. The spotting system is something that comes and goes, and in this case, it's going in the favor of the mix, which really sucks. Personally, I would like to see it even for both, and whilst... Like I said earlier, the Phantom is not the top dog the MiG-21 BIS is. The Phantom would not be losing out as hard as, hard as it did if at least it had the opportunity to fight in a defensive maneuver. 
I think eight kilometers for top tier jets or 10 kilometers is ideal because that is the minimum or, or the maximum effective range of the AIM-7. Well, it's, it's really 12 kilometers, but I think effectively we're looking at 10 kilometers as our sort of most ideal spot. So if each of these planes had a, a 10 kilometer uh, spotting distance, that meaning wherever the plane is, as if it is within 10 kilometers, it is constantly spotted. I think personally that that is going to be the best bet for top tier jets because unlike uh, tanks you really rely on making maneuvers and sort of slowly positioning yourself. Positioning is half the battle with RRB and without a spotting system the RRB match that you play is completely different. You're basically waiting for someone to jump onto you and basically whoever out of luck spots the other is the winner. For me, that really sucks. That's not a game. That's playing and hoping not to get shot down. For me, that's not gameplay. That's just who can be the luckiest. For me, that's not a good way to play the game. That is not a good way to grind. That is not a good way to unlock your events, to do the thing that you love, which is play War Thunder. I think that 10 kilometer radius is the best. And you can see here, in this particular gameplay instance, a lot of these phantoms that are sort of sacrificing their altitude. Granted, some of them are turning like this particular phantom here, and that is to this particular phantom's demise. You shouldn't be turning, you should be sort of boom and zooming like a traditional prop, and of course you have flares to stop things like uh, R60s, or, you know, you can just turn for the R3Rs. However, you know, you can't really fix stupidity, so... That particular phantom bites the dust. Now, for those of you that might happen to be in this recording uh, and you are on the enemy team in a phantom or you are in a MiG, let me know what you saw. Let me know, like, did you spot me or did you spot a teammate when they were three kilometers away? Have you had this happen to you in other matches? Because for me, I've had this happen in props. I've had this happen in jets. And it's extremely frustrating for me. I would just love a little open spotting system like basically like it was a few patches ago. For me, that's where it was ideal. And basically we have ourselves at least some competitiveness at top tier that doesn't totally swing the way of the MiG-21 BIS. For me, that's where it's at. Balance for everyone and just that little bit of uh, handholdiness, just enough to provide for good gameplay. Let me know in the comments section below if you think I'm totally wrong because there's always an extra twist to the story, and I think I've brought it along this time. Anyway, ladies and gents, that basically sums it up for Phantom vs. MiG for patch 2.3, unless they fix the spotting system, which you never know. I, th I think it's one of those bugs that comes and goes, and we just sort of need to wait it out. But for the meantime, you just get pure suffering, which is wrong. You shouldn't have to. But the snail gives, and the snail taketh away. Anyway, ladies and gents, Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you would like to support the channel and if you would like to pick up a model of the MiG-21 or of course the F4 Phantom, both of those are available in the link in the description below via Air Models. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Take care and I'll catch you next time.